member of the state senate, and not only that, but he's the vice president. So, <laughs> please welcome Senator Paul Shin. Class of the 2011 Garfield High School, Aloha! It's not loud enough, let's try it. Aloha! Aloha. On behalf of the Washington State, on behalf of the Garfield High School, I want to congratulate each one of the graduates because this is the commencement, beginning of your life. An American poet Longfellow once said, life is real, life is honest, but time is a fleeting. Yes, life is real and honest. You folks are not graduating, this is the beginning. I want to congratulate you from the bottom of my heart, you have your accomplishments, because uh, I didn't have that kind of education, I was not as lucky as you were. As you can see me, I'm good looking. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, made in Korea <laughs> and recycled in the United States. But before I begin, I'd like to express my profound appreciation to your graduates' parents family and loving family to support them to go through school. You have accomplished a lot and I want to thank you. Unfortunately, in my case, I didn't have a family who could support me. I was born in Korea, as I say. When I was age four, my mother passed away and my father left me. So I was stranded alone. From then, I walked to the city, so-called the Seoul capital city, my home was in train station, bus stations, baking food to stay alive. Never had a home cooked meal, never had a room to sleep. I slept in the train station and go to the marketplace begging for food to survive. I have never, never gone to school, folks. And when I was walking around, the kids usually told me that beggar boy and throw rocks at me. That was my life. I used to watch the students going to school in the morning, tears in my eyes. Why can I be like them? But I never had a chance. Then, 1950, a Korean War came. I saw thousands of American soldiers coming to Korea to fight for freedom. And I was begging from an American soldier, and one soldier took interest in me, and I became their houseboy. Houseboy means uh, polished their shoes, cleaned their barracks, and helping army officers. That was me. You know, I, I, in the army, there are plenty to eat, and plenty of good, nice places to sleep. But each day I cry because uh, I miss my mother. One night after my work was done, I become so emotionally sad. So I went up on the hill, and I cried for my mother. I was uh, 16 years old. Then when I opened my eyes, guess what? The tall man standing before me, that was an American soldier. You can imagine how embarrassed I was. I told him to go away. He said, he did not. He says, why are you crying? I said, go away. He said, why are you crying? You know what he did? He came and hugged me so tight. He said, I have three children in the United States. When they cry, it hurts me inside. And I want to know why you cry. That became the beginning of my life. I was adopted by him when I was age 16. Came to this country when I was 18. With no education, I haven't even gone to grade school. High school didn't accept me because I didn't have a middle school, I've never grade school. So the only choice I had was to study alone by myself for GED. Let me tell you, it was hard, but I was determined to try it because uh, somebody brought me to this country for an opportunity. And let me tell you, from that day on, until I finished my PhD, I have uh, never slept more than three hours a night. And studied and studied, 
I was uh, lucky enough to be able to pass GE in 16 months, went to college, got a bachelor's and master's, and PhD. So much. Fellow graduates, congratulations to you and bon voyage. Life is for you and the life is a gift. You don't intend to waste your life. So keep it up and going to college, whatever the profession you want to go, do best you can. Because in 21st century, it's not a matter of memorization of a history is a matter. But 21st century, who could do first? Innovation new technology, new ideas. You know, the Victor Hugo once says, nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And I'd like you to be their students, grabbing the idea whose time has come, for you to develop and come up with something that could be useful for the civilization. The world is the challenge. America is no exception. We are raised, folks, between rabbit and turtle. We've been a rabbit too long in America. We've been still sleeping. Turtles are catching up with us. Unless we wake up together and move on, they may surpass us. This is why I want to charge you with a desire and ambition to move on, do best you can to fit in society, make a contribution to the country and wonderful country you're born into. And you have no idea how grateful I am to be able to come to the United States as an adoptee and did that. And the being in the Senate, you know, I said to my the, uh, colleagues, how could I, a guy like me, this color, run for public office in a very strong, strong conservative district? And my friend says, who happened to be Governor Booth Gardner, he enticed me to run for the uh, state legislature. I said, I cannot run. He said, uh, What's wrong? Because my color, I don't think I can be elected. And he said, what's wrong with your color? He said, you try, you'll make it. And let me tell you, when I decided to run for the legislature, I didn't want to quit. You know what I did? I wanted to find a new idea that other people don't use. I decided to walk every home, knock on the door, and say, hello, I'm Paul Shin. I've been blessed so much in this country. This is time for me to pay back. Could you help me to get there, please? And bow to them. They don't know how to react to that. They say, you seem very polite. We'll vote for you. And, <laughs> and some people say, you come to such a hot, steam, summer time like this. I say, yes, and you get my vote. You mean you walk up the hill to see me this far? I say, yes, ma'am, and I'll vote for you. And some said that, because you've been bitten by my dog, I'll vote for you too. <laughs> Let me tell you, in order to get the vote, I walked and voted a lot. 29,000 homes. One day a newspaper called me, I understand you walk a lot. I said, yes, I do. How many homes have you knocked so far? 14,000 homes. You cannot believe that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an innovative idea. I, as an immigrant, minority, made an idea by working hard. I was elected the first trial, and this is my 18th year in the state legislature. And so, you see, folks, if you have a desire to serve, you can do anything. You're bright, young, handsome, and beautiful. Uh, this country is for you. So my suggestion to you is effective tonight. Where do I start from here? What am I going to be? You could be anything you want in life. You want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a scientist, you want to be an astronaut. You name the time. If you try hard enough, you could be anything. If I did, you could do that too. I know we're going through a difficult time today economically. And in the Senate, as you perhaps know, we cut a lot of budgets. Education budget and the high education budget. It pained me to take a cut. Very difficult for me. Can you imagine a professor for 31 years taking the education college cut by 70%? It hurt me so much. But I built another metaphor. Is that the, uh, I present to my Senate. I said, that, folks, we need to endure to the end. 
Life is not about waiting until the storm is over. It's about learning how to dance in the storm. So you see, yes, we are going through economic difficulties today, but I promise you, behind the cloud, there is a sunshine, and it is for you to bring that sunshine to the civilization, then we can make the civilization continue. So my hearty congratulations to you, and uh, I hope our meeting today is just not chance, but I hope what I say a little bit to you may be an edification to you. And uh, before I close, may I say, have a dream. You know, I'd like to relate experience to you. When I was teaching at the University of Hawaii, one day a student walked into my office. He said, uh, Professor Shin, I think I have to discontinue my education. I said, how come? By the way, his name is Hani Smiley from New Zealand. He said, uh, my father passed away last month. I went home to bury my father. Now, financially, I cannot afford to continue education, so I must just say goodbye. I said, uh, honey, you're a junior in university. If you try a little harder, stay one more year, you could graduate and go home to your country. Can't you do that? He said, I'm afraid I don't have a tuition money. I felt so sorry and compassionate towards him. As a college professor, you don't make very much. But I said, you know, honey, I'd like to make a challenge to you. He said, what is that? For next to one year while here, I'll pay for your tuition. But it says conditional tuition. He said, what is it? Within next year, if you could bring that idea, that could make a lots of money. I'll charge no interest. I'll give all the money to you. He said, okay, I'll take it. You know, and uh, you know what happened? Four months later, he showed up in my office. You know what he brought in? You know, white paper, just a round circle, black circle. I said, honey, what is this? How did you make money out of this? He says, this is, uh, anybody been to Hawaii? Have you seen hula hoop? Little plastic things to put in your shirt and dance like this? That was his idea. And I thought that was excellent. So he and I went to a plastic company and presented the idea to him. And you know what the owner did? He signed him a $5,000 check to him. This is 1965 and he finished the University of Hawaii. Today he's the sixth richest man in New Zealand. So you see, so you see, for you in your head, come up with the best idea whose time has come, then you could become wealthy, you could become innovative, you could do anything you want to. So may I say to you, bon voyage and good luck to you, have a dream, okay?